What is up, everybody? My name is Razorian Book, and uh, I kind of wanted to do like a tutorial video on how I edit my videos, but I realized I'm not very good at tutorials, so I thought I would do like how I edit videos style. Uh, but turns out I'm not good at that either. The reason is a lot of it is uh, trial and error, and I'm learning as well. So every time I'd make a mistake or something, I had to go back and do something because it didn't work, you know. So that style of video didn't work. So this is more like a commentary over, um, well, I'm showing you here my workflow, and I've sped it up by like five times. Uh, because you know it's like hours worth of footage and I just thought I'd talk a little bit about uh, what I'm doing here uh, if you're interested in that kind of thing so this is a piano cover that I recently put on my YouTube channel and I have filmed four different angles and what I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be adding a holographic effect of the actual music video that you can see there um, really quick if you caught it um, I'm gonna be adding that as a holographic image over top of my head and then I'm gonna be taking all the clips and I'm gonna be uh, cutting them all together into one video um, I had a problem though the original idea was to take the video and have it holographic projected out of the webcam that you see there and it would be right in front of my face but the problem is my face is so close to the monitor that I'd literally be looking a few inches uh, in front of the screen and it would, would it look stupid it's not how people watch TVs or, or uh, holographic projections uh, so I decided that I would uh, have the holographic image uh, displayed over my head but in order to do that I needed to change the angle of the webcam so that's what I'm doing here and I'm actually doing this in Photoshop right now I just captured a still image from each frame that was a mess up uh, these are all mess ups I'm just trying different things but uh, I the still frame that I had to capture I had to make sure that the shadow from my head was over top of the webcam because I moved my head around and then the shadow would be gone and if I took a still frame where the shadow wasn't there it would look really weird every time the shadow was supposed to be there and it isn't however the reverse effect if the shadow remains there even when my head isn't there it it doesn't look wrong it just looks um, normal and I was just lucky because I didn't know how it was going to turn out in the end but as you can see there I just copied and kind of pasted the the lens and moved it over and tweaked it and now I'm just covering up where the lens was uh, and this is just the still image in Photoshop and then I'll be taking that over into Premiere uh, where I uh, put it over top of the video and then I will uh, mask out just the webcam so that the video plays but the still image stays and uh, I have to do that for every for all four shots and it actually wasn't that hard this entire video actually came along quite smooth a lot a lot quicker than my videos usually take so I was kinda happy about that this is all I'm just confused and I don't really know what I'm doing because uh, every video I make has a uh, unique problems that I need to solve but yeah I eventually figured it out that looks pretty good and you know up close maybe you can kinda tell but when you zoom out to what it's actually supposed to the actual size then you you don't see nothing uh, so the holographic image that I'm gonna put in here I'm gonna also have like light beams coming from the uh, from the lens and you'll be seeing that in a second because the hologram is what I'm going to be doing next um.
The other reason why it was so important to have the hologram over my head was because I didn't want to spend hours and hours and hours uh, masking out my head every time it went uh, in front of the screen, uh, which would have been a huge problem if that were the case and I did have to mask out uh, certain parts of the video then I probably would have edited uh, all four camera angles and then I would have added the uh, hologram effect after but doing it this way I don't have to mask out anything and then I can just add the holographic image to all four camera angles before editing and then I'll just edit all the footage together after because it doesn't take any uh, extra time to add it to a three minute clip or to a 30 second clip uh, because there's n no extra stuff I really need to do. Uh, here we're finally getting into Premiere because I've edited all, um, all the Photoshop images so here I'm putting the uh, photos over top of the video and I'm masking out uh, just the part of the photo that I need uh, to change the camera angle so you can see I'm still moving around and uh, playing the piano meanwhile I've fixed the problem with the cam with the lens angle you can see there uh, why it was so important for the shadows getting in the way so I had to kind of adjust different levels so it looked normal so when I move my head there the shadow doesn't actually go away because it's a still image but it looks normal and if I had taken a, a still image without the shadow of my head it would have looked weird so I was just lucky that I thought of that beforehand because if I did all that work and then realized there was a problem that was sucked here you can notice there's a little bit of camera shake the reason is that the camera was on the table and as I was playing the piano it was shaking uh, the table uh, but I was a little concerned that like I didn't want to motion track the, um, the the entire footage so I was a little concerned it might look weird, but when you zoom out and look at the entire, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> when you zoom out and see it in full, it's so small that you really can't tell. So I felt it was good enough for what I was doing, and uh, you probably wouldn't even notice except for the fact that I just told you. So now if you go back and watch the video and you're looking for it, you'll see it, but um, yeah. So here, yeah, I'm just adjusting levels and stuff to try to make it uh, look normal. And I think I did a pretty good job. See, you see there, I, I zoom out, you can't even see anything anyways. It's just a little tiny thing in the background. Um, just, I just saved that one and now I'm going to move on to the next one. Now I was actually a little lucky because uh, one of the camera angles, this one here, it... Uh, it's at a certain height that you don't even see the holographic uh, projection therefore I really didn't have to do anything except for color correcting which um, I do I think I'm doing that at the same time right now basically uh, what I'm doing is uh, after I've changed the the lens on the webcam I'm rendering these videos out again uh, so when I do the holographic projection I'm just using a clean uh, track without having to do layers on layers because the holographic projection and all the, the special effects I'm going to have to apply um, it could slow down my computer so I'm also aligning all the tracks right now so that they all start at the correct time and I do that because uh, with a metronome which I've got set you can see at the very beginning of the tracks there are uh, eight little clicks there in the audio so I just align all those clicks uh, for the four 
the shots I took as well as the music video so when I render out all the tracks they all start at the same time that way when I'm done adding all the uh, special effects in, in After Effects I can simply bring them all back in the Premiere and I know that they'll all line up ready to go uh, so when I start cutting through the different tracks uh, I don't have to worry about moving one a little left or a little right in order to be in sync and uh, so it was really good that I did it now and it was important for me to have the audio on all the different camera angles that I did that way I can use the audio to line up the tracks rather than just looking at the footage and trying to uh, decipher when I start the song you can notice that the volume is clipping on the side but uh, that's because I have so many takes going on at once and now that I've muted most of them you can see it's not clipping anymore uh, but none of that matters because I'm not going to be using any of the aud audio in the final product so this is where I'm actually cutting the beginning of the video and I cut the end as well and that's to make sure everything lines up correctly uh, for most of them I can just drag the beginning back a bit because the song hasn't even started at, at that point uh, but you can see that notice that there's one or two videos there that um, start after but because I'm rendering all these out before going on to the next stage uh, it'll just insert a black space there and the video will still start at the same time as the rest of them and I I didn't really need them to all end at the same time too, but I just felt like that was something I wanted to do. I mean, the song was done. There wasn't any point in keeping extra footage that I wasn't going to use in the end. And it's just more stuff to uh, to deal with when I'm on the next process. No I'm saying? Yeah, and this is where I start color correcting everything right before I go to render out each vi video individually. I'm just using a auto color correction. Uh, I've never done that before, but I kind of felt like it would work out o work out okay. But then I decided that I wanted a little bit more blue in there, so I'm just uh, adding a little extra blue. Besides that, I just used auto uh, color correction and now I'm muting all the tracks that I don't want and I'm just rendering out each track individually however I'm using the same audio for each track and it's not something I had to do but I knew that the um, other audio tracks the ones that had the metronome in them I, I, I didn't need them anymore so it just made more sense to have the same audio track on every single uh, individual clip and now we're in After Effects and I've um, turned the music video into a 3D layer and I'm positioning it into the angle that I want and I want it kind of angled uh, over top of my head but also leaning uh, outwards you'll see what I mean I don't know how to describe it uh, I've uh, lowered the opacity a little bit here I'm adding a little bit of film grain and I'm messing around with colors I don't exactly know what it is I want yet I've just duplicated the layer there and I've put it so there's two layers on top of each other and I'm blurring out the back layer and then I'm gonna leave the the front layer and that's gonna, just gonna give it more of a hazy effect because it's supposed to be a holographic image so it's you know it's supposed to look a little blurry but I didn't want to blur the actual image that's why I duplicated it and just blurred out uh, the background image so right now I'm just uh, trying out different effects seeing what they do see if I can come up with something cool 
in the end I don't think I end up using most of these effects and in this particular shot you can't see the rays coming out of the uh, out of the webcam because the webcam is completely behind the holographic image so you won't see any me do any of that until we get to the other uh, shots which was good because that means it was less work for me Yeah, see, right now, I'm just messing around with different effects, uh, see, seeing if I can find something special. I don't know what half these effects do, so you never know when you're just going to click on something and you just say, oh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for, or, hey, I didn't even know I could do something like this. Um, I, originally, uh, I was thinking about possibly curving the image, but uh, I never found the right effect to do that so I just scrapped it but right now I found this effect that basically creates a shadow on the wall which was awesome that really sells a shot but right now I'm noticing uh, well actually as I'm editing uh, in the moment I remember noticing that the shadow on the wall uh, isn't the same contrast or uh, saturation as the real shadows that are on the wall so I had to mess around with that a little bit in order to make it more look more real. In the end, I don't even think I uh, used this effect. I decided I would just duplicate the music video and then place that on the wall. And I used different transparencies and stuff because I wanted the shadow to also move. Because if you think about it, the light is going through the projection and then casting a shadow on the wall so when when the projection moves you would think the shadow would also move not left and right but I'm talking about like the colors and stuff you know like when you take a, a red piece of you know Christmas paper or wrapping or whatever you put in front of the, the, the light and it makes your entire room red right not Christmas wrapping but you know what I'm talking about so I wanted to have that effect also uh, in my video and I accomplished it I don't remember how it's somewhere in here <laughs> maybe I'll see it um, but it, a lot of it was just dealing with um, different styles of opacity really and a little bit of blurriness here like I blurred out the shadow a lot more and that's how I got it to look a lot more realistic also the projection you can see the edges seem really sharp and I think that's what I'm trying to fix right now uh, yeah so I'm adding a mask and the reason why I'm doing that is just so I can feather the sides and that will create an uh, effect where the the edges aren't so sharp. It almost looks like glass right now. And I, and I didn't like that. But I didn't know how to just feather it. I couldn't find the effect. You know, like I said, trial and error. Just learn. So I just decided to uh, mask it. Because I know you can apply a feather to a mask in After Effects. And if you're not that advanced, you have no clue what I'm talking about. Well, uh... It's okay. I just know it's something that could be done. I'm just I'm just talking here. Here I'm messing around with the different colors. You know in Star Wars and stuff, usually for holograms, they use a blue or a green tint. Uh, so I, I'm messing around with that, but I think just a little bit of red and orange is, is really what I was going for. Uh, so here I'm just messing around with the shadow because uh, I wanted the shadow. The shadow had to be a, at a different angle because it's supposed to be against the wall. And right now it doesn't look like it's against the wall because it's not angled right. So I had to mess with that a bit. Um, I hope you en you're enjoying listening to this or watching it. I don't know. It's just something I thought I would do. Because I put a lot of work into my videos and uh, I don't think people realize how much work I actually put into them and a lot of the effects I do are kind of background right they're not 
necessarily meant to be the the main focus of the video. Thank you. So here I've see I've made it black and white. Uh, now I'm blurring the edges. That's how I'm creating the shadow here. And you can see here how um, you know you can still see the image, but it's still very uh, clear. You can make out the chick there. So I'm just messing around with it a little bit more trying to uh, make it not so noticeable and in the end I think I end up adding some of the color back so it's not completely black and white if I remember correctly now it looks really blurred out so I apologize but I didn't actually screen capture uh, me editing the holograms for the other couple videos and those are the videos that had the light beams coming out of the webcam because of the angle you could that's something you could actually see uh, but the reason I didn't screen capture it was because it takes a couple hours to render each video and I went to sleep and then I like woke up halfway through the night and I was like oh let's get this done that way it can spend another two hours render while I go back to sleep so I just never end up doing that uh, so we're gonna skip to the next part here where I start editing the video all together so now all the holographic projections are done and it's time to cut the clips up into sections right and I'm using a new uh, thing that I've never tried before and that's a multicam and it takes me a few tries here to figure out how to use it but basically oh, what you do is you go into the settings you hit multicam it takes all the camera footage you have as as well as the audio track and it syncs everything up here you can see the four different camera angles and then on the right you see the the finished pro product so now I can just hit buttons in real time and decide which camera angle I want. Uh, it was a little frustrating because my computer had a hard time handling it. So every time I switched to a camera angle, it there would be a two second delay. So I had to constantly stop and, and cut the tracks and move them over. As you can see, I just did there. Um, so that kind of sucked, but the in the idea of doing it this way uh, still really sped up the process, and I could just see, you know, at which angles did I want to use for certain parts, and which ones have I recently used, and it just worked out really well, uh, despite the fact that my computer was slow and not being able to handle it very well. And there's a way I probably could have fixed that, but I didn't realize it was going to be a problem until it was a problem, so. And you can see the the uh, camera view that I'm on is highlighted in yellow. And I'm just switching back and forth. And basically as I play the clip, uh, all I have to do is hit the 1 or the 2 or the 3 or the 4 on my keyboard and it automatically switches so then when I stop the video it automatically makes all the cuts for me the reason why it's actually taking this long is just because my computer was slow and it was uh, stopping uh, or cutting the clips with a two second delay and that was really bothering me because because it's a music cover and there's like 4-4 four, four timing you know I wanted the the cuts to be on the beat so if I was trying to cut a clip on the bass drum but there's a two second delay well now it's just the the camera angle is changing uh, at some weird spot after you know say the chorus comes in so uh, probably out of this entire pro project that was the most frustrating part but like I said earlier, this project actually uh, went pretty smooth. Usually, I'd be spending hours and hours and hours, days, doing this kind of stuff. Um, 
But this one, uh, I probably spent five hours on it in total. And this is literally the last part that I need to do before this video is completely done because I've already c color corrected it and then I rendered out each individual video with the color corrections and the webcam changes and then when I finished with the holographic projection on each video I then rendered those videos out uh, in full like the full length of the song so now it's just a matter of picking which sections I want to use um, which camera angles and then when, once I'm done that I just watch it watch it back make sure the uh, audio is a good level and then that's pretty much it I I do at the end I I do a fade out they call it a dip to black and I didn't do it do it during the beginning I think if I went back if I could go back maybe I would uh, fade it in from black as well but I didn't do that but yeah I think it's really cool that um, I'm editing the video right now and I'm only working with one track there I mean I'm I have four different layers four different camera angles but in the timeline you can only it shows as one track so it's not cluttering up my workspace and so I'm pretty happy with uh, this multicam uh, method of working which I've never used before and I did have to go on YouTube and check out some tutorials on how to use it beforehand and uh, not a big deal I, the the first one I checked out was uh, pretty much told me everything I needed to know it was actually pretty self-explanatory uh, you can notice there at the end oh yeah that was a problem at the end so when I was rendering out the videos I made sure that the video stopped when it was supposed to stop but I never took out the shadow in the background so the video stops and the shadow stays so that was something I needed to fix I was a random thing at the very end I was like oh man what am I gonna do about that so I ended up going back to my source footage, the original footage that I had filmed. Um, actually, well, the one where the webcam was still facing the right direction, but before I put the holograms in. So I went back to the, see, I'm doing it right now. I'm grabbing the, uh, the footage without the webcam, and now I'm throwing that in there. And that gets rid of the shadow. So it looks like once the video's done, the hologram and the shadow goes away and now I'm just doing the uh, dip to black which is you know uh, just a fade out right and that's pretty much it um, <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed this smash the like button uh, subscribe if you have not yet and all that other stuff. The rest of this, uh, what you're seeing here is just, you know, I'm reviewing everything to see, make sure I like it, make sure um, uh, it, all the clips are cutting at the right spots, make sure nothing stands out. That's a huge mistake that I didn't notice before. So yeah, just reviewing the, the project, but you can go see that um, on my channel if you haven't seen it yet, but Anyways, uh, let me know if you enjoy this style, uh, just this commentary over me editing and talking about stuff. I f find it's actually not that hard to do. I've had to cut the audio a few times for screwing up and not knowing what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, I quite enjoy it, so if you get something out of it, please let me know that you did. Uh, that it was something to listen to that you uh, found, I don't know, maybe amusing or beats me why you would listen to this because I'm crazy. <laughs> Anyways, Razorian is out. Uh, have a wonderful night. I'll see you again soon. Peace.